LPT. Some secret ingredients to common recipes. Here are some chef tricks I learned from my mother that take some common foods to another level. 1. Add a bit of cream to your scrambled eggs and whisk for much longer than you'd think. Stir your eggs very often in the pan at medium-high heat. It makes the softest, fluffiest eggs. When I don't have heavy cream, I use cream cheese. Update. Many are recommending sour cream or water for steam. 2. Mayo in your grilled cheese instead of butter, just lightly spread inside the sandwich. I was really skeptical but wow, I'm never going back to butter. Edit. Butter the mayo very lightly on inside of sandwich and only use a little. Was a game changer for me. Edit 2. I still use butter on the outside, I'm not a barbarian. Though many are suggesting to do that as well, mayo on the outside. 3. Baking something with chocolate? Add a small pinch of salt to your melted chocolate. Even if the recipe doesn't say it, it makes the chocolate flavor explode. 4. Let your washed rice soak in cold water for 10 minutes before cooking. Makes it fluffy. 5. Add a couple drops of vanilla extract to your hot chocolate and stir. It makes it taste heavenly. Bonus points if you add cinnamon and nutmeg. 6. This one is a question of personal taste, but adding a macrude lime leaf to ramen broth, especially store-bought, makes it taste a lot more flavorful. Macrude lime, fish sauce, green onions and a bit of soy sauce gives that Walmart ramen umami. Feel free to add more in the comments. Update. The people have spoken and is alleging. 7. A pinch of sugar to tomato sauces and chili to cut off the acidity of tomato. 8. Some instant coffee in chocolate mix as well as salt. 9. A pinch of salt in your coffee, for same reason. As chocolate. 10. Cinnamon, and cumin, in meaty tomato recipes like chili. 11. Brown sugar on bacon. 12. Kosher salt greater than table salt. Update 2. I thought of another one, courtesy of a wonderful lady called Mindy who lost a sudden battle with cancer two years ago. 13. Drizzle your fruit salad with lemon juice so your fruits, especially your bananas, don't go brown and gross. P.S. I'm not American, but good guess. No, I'm not. God's earthly prophet of cooking and I may stand corrected. Yes, you may think some of these suggestions go against the Geneva Convention. No, nobody will be force-feeding you these but if you call a food combination, gross, or, disgusting, you automatically sound like a four-year-old being. Presented Broccoli Bake your bacon started in a cold oven and let the bacon come up to temp with the oven so the a** renders more evenly. You'll get crispy bacon that's not half chewy and you won't deal with the grease splatters that happen with pan frying. I've tried the mayo instead of butter, don't like it. Nothing beats the taste of butter. Fish sauce, Worcestershire, and soy sauce are your best friends in is more. Except Worcestershire, but it's not salty. So the more the merrier, little bits of one or the other will make any savory dish better. I put unsweetened cocoa in my chili. It adds a depth of richness that is awesome. I found that the real LPT is to use seasoned butter with garlic and basil. My Walmart sells it but I'm sure someone with the time could make it just as well. Garlic bread grilled cheese with deli chicken has never tasted so good. I've been doing this for the last few years, vouch. Additionally, when it's finished but still warm, stir in the juice of a fresh lime. It cuts the dense, savory umami and adds tons of depth of flavor. Add a bit of English mustard to cheese sauces. It makes it taste extra cheesy. I keep jars of better than bouillon in many varieties. It can make a big difference. If you can't get them all, at least get beef, chicken, sautéed onion, and roasted garlic. When making quesadillas use queso Oaxaca instead of whatever you've been using. Learn this from Uncle Jed of the Beverly Hillbillies. When you're frying your bacon sprinkle a pinch of sugar on every slice. Who doggies? Extra garlic, shallots, butter, salt equals tastes like a restaurant. Yup, mayo is far inferior to butter. A bit of pickle juice in your deviled eggs. I cannot eat chicken soup anymore without adding fresh lemon juice. It adds a certain something that leaves me wanting to drink it through a straw. Pressure cooking a small chicken in an instant a gives you a terrific stock in a fraction of the time it takes on the stove, by the way. Cook. 
For an hour and you end up with a rich stock that jellies right up in the fridge thanks to all that I always follow the cookie recipe on the bag of Toll House chocolate chips, but I add a bit more salt than what's called for, using unsalted butter. It makes all the difference. Growing up, when my mom made pasta she'd give the salt shaker a couple shakes into the water and that would be it. Only when I grew up did I discover the difference between that method and adding a palmful or more to the water, depending on how much water is being used. The difference is staggering. Instant coffee to any brownie mix is a must. Nutmeg and cheese, dairy-based soups and sauces adds a nice depth of flavor. Bay leaves in everything savory. So underrated but I can't live without it now. Add a little bit of depth. The real LPT is adding many different kinds of cheese to your grilled cheese to make it flavorful. From a former pastry chef, the tip about adding salt to chocolate desserts can be expanded to all desserts. Salt is a necessary component in all desserts because it is a flavor enhancer in most cases, and a great contrast in higher for all those who have responded thinking that I am advocating for. Either giving the world hypertension or making all sweets into savory, I am talking about a pinch to a teaspoon of salt in an entire recipe. Yes, finishing salts like fleur de sel, added at the end of the baking process, are great for if you want salted caramels or salted chocolate chip cookies, but the baseline I am suggesting is literally so minimal that you should not taste the salt. The idea of using the salt is to taste the other flavors more, hence, flavor enhancer. Well written dessert recipes tend to call for around a teaspoon of salt, I am saying if your recipe does not, maybe. Give it a whirl because it probably should. This and using actual dried chilies instead of chili powder, they are real game changers for making great chili. Also add sesame oil to the ramen. 10 out of 10. I also add fish sauce, chopped green onions, and an over easy egg to my ramen. Um, I know what I'm having for lunch. Always make a roux for mac and cheese. Lots of recipes call for adding cream cheese to create the creaminess, that's cheating and tastes like. MSG in pretty much everything, but especially Asian cuisine. I don't understand why it got so much bad press. It's delicious and really amps up the umami flavor. Be sure to let people know. I have a friend who is allergic to chocolate and got sick after eating someone's chili without knowing it was in there. And you can make enough for the family all at once instead of a few straps at a time. Brown sugar will give it an incredible flavor. Especially if you bake the bacon. Mix in a small bit of cayenne and it's a dream. Greater than 5. Add a couple drops of vanilla extract to your hot chocolate and stir. It makes it taste remember when I was a kid, I did this. Learned a very valuable lesson why you don't use too much. Whisk in a teaspoon of water per egg to your scrambled eggs is another way to get them fluffy. As they cook, the steam fluffs them actually the same reason cream or milk fluffs up scrambled eggs. The steam from the liquid is doing the work. I'm not much of a cook. This thread has been very useful thank you. And a tablespoon of dark molasses. Cinnamon is another seasoning that is underutilized in savory cooking. Add a TSP of cinnamon to your chili or taco seasoning. It's a game changer. When a recipe calls for garlic, add roasted garlic. A pinch of baking soda renders sautéed onions faster. Salt your pasta water until it tastes like Poseidon's tears. A secret technique rather than a secret ingredient. For grilled cheese, Assemble the sandwich open-faced on a baking sheet and then put it under the broiler until the cheese is melted and bubbling and lightly brown. Then close it up and cook it on a skillet with butter as normal, with the lid on. The cheese is hot and melty and asterisk stays that way for a long time after you serve it, and the browning adds a lot to the roasted garlic and mashed potatoes is killer. If your store doesn't have Oaxaca, Monterey Jack is the closest. Shred yourself. Wash your sister sauce. Rest your cookie doughs 24 to 36 hours in the fridge. This will make the most humble cookie taste a million times better. They also make vegetarian versions. You can typically find the not chicken at natural grocers and you can easily order the not beef online. Game changers for plant-based meals. It's based on one letter sent to a magazine that took on a life of its own. Cumin and cinnamon together make ground beef taste amazing. That's the secret to Picadillo, and to a lot of other dishes. I don't know, why, and maybe it's mostly a Cuban thing but yeah. 
makes the flavor better. It works with other veggies you want soft too. I found a jar of half a pound of bay leaves and I can't tell you how excited I was. I also put it in everything and I laugh at recipes that say to use one bay leaf. To add on to the rice tip, rinse your rice a few times with agitation to remove excess starch. The water should only be slightly cloudy once it's ready. This helps keep the rice from clumping on the bottom of the pan. Also works for coffee. I already asked this you have known food allergies. Wouldn't you ask before consuming anything not made by you? I think I would try anything without asking first. What happened to you? I put too much in brookies one time. My sister ate them all and had a bad stomach. Unsure if excess vanilla or eating a whole tray of brookies was the cause. A thing my grandma told me was, if it's sweet like a dessert, add a pinch of salt. If it's salty, add a pinch of sugar. Especially anything with tomatoes is so much better with a pinch of sugar in it. As Alton Brown, and probably lots of other people over time, said, salt makes most food taste more like itself. I might have I noticed a lot of people saying use mayo instead of butter for grilled cool and all. I sometimes still use butter for the flavor, but if you want to try using other cheeses besides American, grate your cheese fresh and do a mixture of one-third, mild provolone and two-thirds your choice. You'll get lots of cheese pull due to the provolone. It's a nice way to change it up now and then. Also bread. Bread is everything by a sourdough loaf from a bakery. That crispy outside and fluffy middle adds depth to a regular another side note. If you like sub sandwiches, try to find hoagie rolls nearby. Same as that crunchy crispy outside combined with a fluffy inside adds so much depth to any cold cut. I make simple turkey and provolone in Italians topped with oil and red vinegar plus spices for work. Everyone always ask where I buy them. I don't. I make them and you won't go back once you learn to make them like that. If your pasta sauce is too salty, toss in a potato. I wouldn't think to ask, is there any chocolate in this chili? That's what I add to my homemade tomato sauce. This and fennel seeds. You'd be surprised. As a long-term waiter I would get people asking me if a strawberry cheesecake would be okay if they were allergic to strawberries. People who had just finished a meal would say, oh a there weren't peanuts in that, were there? I'm deathly allergic. On the two occasions I had to get the EpiPen, both were for a common ingredient in a dish, beans in beef stew, and eggplant in eggplant parmesan. I think like anything else that an allergy just becomes a background thing you can ignore until you suddenly can't. 